Kent Hovind is a creationist who likes to take on any and all challenges regarding evolution. And recently he started a new mini-series that he's calling Evolution is a Dumb and Dangerous Cult. Prove me wrong. So I thought I'd take a look and see what sort of content he's producing on these videos. And I was not disappointed with what I found. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tim Ford Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Before we begin with today's video though, I was reading earlier how a one million year old skull found in China is challenging human evolution timelines. And I was reading that story on ground use, which was actually founded by a former NASA engineer called Harleen Kaur, who worked on the James Webb Space Telescope. Now, Ground News combines stories and articles from thousands of outlets, local and national. In one place, so readers can see the full picture of what's being reported around the world. As you can see here, Ground News shows you if there's any political leanings for each publication. And in this instance, with the Skull story from China, we can see that it's mainly center driven with 119 total news sources. For every story, you get a quick visual breakdown of the news outlet that's covering it, what their political bias is, how factual the source is, which entity owns that source, and which countries are covering the story. Now, Ground News is also gaining notoriety for its work. They were recently recognised by the Nobel Peace Centre for their impact on media literacy, saying it's an excellent way to stay informed, avoid echo chambers, and expand your worldview, which is exactly why we use Ground News as well. You can see every side to every story with access to international perspectives that are hard to find, so then you can make informed decisions where you can read, watch, and share the best information available. And Ground News is mission-centric, it's not about eliminating bias, but providing better transparency. Plus, they're funded by the community, not by big ads or investors. So just go to ground.news slash Simon, stay fully informed on breaking news and compare media coverage. Subscribe through my link in the description for 40% off unlimited access if you support the mission and find it as useful as I do. Right then, on with today's video, which as you saw from the intro is from Kent Hovind. We start as Kent reads out a question from one of his followers about how to deal with an atheist that this guy is currently debating. Let's have a look. I'm arguing with an atheist now, know it all, who claims that science has tried but failed to model the Grand Canyon being created in a catastrophic event such as the flood. Well, first of all, I don't say the Grand Canyon was caused by the flood. Grand Canyon probably came 100 years after the flood. Well, that sounds marginally less ridiculous, I suppose. But Kent's got a huge problem here, because catastrophic floods don't cause long, winding, perfectly carved canyons. They carve chaotic channels and straight chutes. The Grand Canyon looks nothing like that. It meanders for 446 kilometers, like a river taking its sweet time, because that's exactly what happened. I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, is that the question? Let me go to Grand Canyon here. There. Talk about Grand Canyon for a moment. I've been there many times, studied it avidly. I taught her science 15 years. Grand Canyon, without a doubt, is a really big hole in the ground. No question. About 5 million people a year visit Grand Canyon. What are they being taught? There's a bunch of them on the platform there. Lined up to get in to see Grand Canyon. People say, oh, go see Grand Canyon. It's great. The Indians dance around there. Learn ge geological history, that is baloney. You learn propaganda. There's no such thing as a geologic column, okay? The geologic column isn't some imaginary totem pole that researchers dreamed up. It's simply the combined record of rock layers observed around the world. You don't need every layer stacked perfectly in every location. You correlate them using fossils and radiometric ages, sediment types and unconformities, and actually, Ironically, the Grand Canyon is one of the clearest real-world demonstrations of the geologic column. Two and a half mile, 2.8 mile trail. Kids go down and they're brainwashed into believing it took millions of years. I'll show you here. Come on, scouts on are here. Come on, boys, follow me. We're going to go down here and we're going to see all these plaques that tell you how old this is. Trail of time at the Grand Canyon. By the way, I'll debate any of you park rangers anytime, okay? You're lying to the kid. You don't know it, but you are lying to the kids, okay? You probably really believe what you're teaching them, or you have to to keep your job. You walk down the trail, and they got these markers every so often. Oh, this is 1,800 million years ago, 1.8 billion, whoa, okay? You go down this trail, and they got all these markers, <clears throat> pure baloney. Now Kent's mocking the sign that says 1.8 billion years old. But that number comes from the Vishnu Schist, 
Now that sits at the canyon's base and it's been dated using several independent radiometric methods. These methods don't care about what anyone believes. Uranium decays into lead at a measurable consistent rate. You can run the samples in different labs and get the same age. Calling that baloney doesn't overturn nuclear physics. They have the different layers of the canyon marked off. There's the river way at the bottom down there, okay? Here's all the layers. We have uh, all the sandstone and limestone formations and all that stuff. Kaibab limestone. Notice there's limestone in here quite a few times. Red Wall limestone, Temple Butte limestone, Mauve limestone. How do you tell the difference? Oh, by the fossils. I understand, yeah. It's your stupid geologic column in the fossil. Having repeated limestone layers is not a problem. It's exactly what you'd expect when an area was covered by shallow seas multiple times, over hundreds of millions of years. Sea levels rise, limestone forms. Sea level falls, erosion or new sediments form. Sea levels rise again, another limestone. All the layers we see are sedimentary rock, and there's no erosion marks between them, and there's no soil buildup between them. These layers didn't sit there for millions of years waiting for the next one to land. Each of them was deposited a few hours or a few days apart. Each tide, tidal pumping, would cause that. Actually, there are multiple paleosols, or ancient soil layers. Not every environment produces soil, of course, and not every surface is exposed long enough for soil to form. Most of the canyon's layers were deposited in marine or desert environments, where soil, of course, simply doesn't form. Textbook says over millions of years, the Colorado River carved the Grand Canyon from solid rock. This is baloney. It's a fact Grand Canyon exists. It is not a fact it took millions of years. There's the evolutionist interpretation, and the creationist interpretation. Evolutionists say it formed slowly by a little water and lots of time. Creationists say it formed quickly by lots of water and a little bit of time. And the evolutionists are always trying to erase the line between their theory and the fact. And they try to ignore the creation point of view, okay? <clears throat> Kent frames this as two interpretations, the evolutionist one and the creationist one, as if both explain the canyon equally well. But geology isn't a matter of voting. The canyon isn't interpreted one way because people prefer it. It's interpreted that way because the evidence matches one model and completely contradicts the other. The rocks don't care what label you put on them. The lots of water, little time idea fails immediately because catastrophic floods cause straight chaotic channels. They gouge and then dump debris everywhere. They don't create 446 kilometers of graceful meanders. The Grand Canyon follows the classic pattern of slow river erosion. Winding curves, incised meanders, tributary canyons, river terraces, and a step-by-step -step lowering of the riverbed over millions of years. Kent then decides to tell us how he thinks those layers were formed in the Grand Canyon. The layers form sideways as the water's going back and forth with the tide from the earth spinning under the moon's gravity, pulling the tide up and down called tidal pumping. All the layers form sideways. And you can have a layer on top that's older, a fossil on top, that's older than one on the bottom. Kent's tidal pumping idea sounds dramatic, but it's got nothing to do with actual structures inside the Grand Canyon's layers. Real tidal deposits have very distinct features, and we see none of those features in the Grand Canyon. Instead, we see desert dunes, river channels, shallow marine limestone, offshore mudstone, each with the sedimentary structures you'd expect from those environments. These rocks weren't laid sideways by a sloshing ocean. They were formed in entirely different environments over huge spans of time. And for Kent to try and suggest otherwise is simply ridiculous. Now we could go on and listen to Kent ramble on about this some more, but I think we get his point. My word, Kent, this really is a ridiculous attempt at trying to squeeze your beliefs into real world geological phenomena. And that's where we're gonna wrap up today's video. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of uh, Kent's ideas there on the Grand Canyon. As I say, well done and dusted for another one. Thank you so much for watching today. As ever, it's appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. Just enough time to once again thank Ground News for sponsoring today's video. Remember, go to ground.news slash Simon, stay fully informed on breaking news and compare media coverage. Just click the link in the description to get 40% off unlimited access if you support the mission and find it as useful as I do. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for a tick-tocking flat earther. Great, see you then. <laughs>